Hey everybody, welcome back to Sounds Like a Drum, Kids Independent Media Production. If you're just joining us, here we talk about tone and sound and tone production, busting myths and finding hacks and things like that. And today we're addressing a fan question. Uh, coated resos on your toms with clear batters, the last combination that we haven't done yet. All the combinations that we've done so far on our toms, I've done at some point in my life, except for this one. Uh, this is literally something that uh, multiple people have asked for over the course of several videos where we've talked about different sorts of batters for the toms and what they do to the sound. And this is a curious one because it's super common to have a coated batter and a clear rezzo. Um, and if you've ever flipped your tom over to tap on the bottom, you're basically doing what we did here, you know, like if you're tuning the, the rezzo head. We became curious when so many other people were curious about what would happen if we actually tried to tune up a drum with this head configuration, um, basically just to see if there actually is a difference. Obviously there's a difference when you change out the batters from clear to coated because of the literal striking of that head, but with a rezzo, it is mostly a tone production and a tone sustaining part of the drum. So we're just gonna kind of see, you know, what happens when we do this. And of course, thanks again to Promark, our presenting sponsor, for taking care of us here. What we're using today is coated G1s on the bottom, pretty standard. Uh, we chose clear EC2 batters today, um, kind of just for something different. They're not that dramatically different than a standard uh, clear head, but they are specifically kind of designed to be a batter, and this is a batter that a lot of people use. So uh, it just seemed like a fun thing to do for us. Fundamentally, what we're dealing with here is clear on top, coated on the bottom, and uh, for the clear, uh, we're using clear G1s on the bottom. And the idea here is that we did not tune them differently. We didn't think to ourselves, there's one tuning for coated and one tuning for clear. What we want here is for you to just hear if there's coating or not. And so coated G1, clear G1, it's basically the same stuff. One's just got coating on it and one doesn't. First off, let's go with clear, clear. Um, this is pretty common. It's kind of a rock thing. It's real loud. It's real articulate. Um, we went in sort of a medium tuning range and we're just going to go through with some styles and some kind of vibes so you can get a sense of what these are going to do. So to me, fairly predictable response. Um, you know, I've done clear on clear before in my life. Most of us have at some point. Um, so let's just kind of cut right to the chase here and swap out the bottoms, go to coded and see what we get. Thank you. 
again, exact same pitches. I, I actually like I used a tuner sort of on my phone to make sure that the bottom heads are exactly the same as they were before because we don't want any variables except for the coding in this case. And to my ear, there is a barely discernible difference going on. And that was actually kind of surprising to me. I, I was kind of I was expecting there to be a little bit more of a jump um, or something to happen. The room mics aren't very different. The close mics aren't very different. The one thing that is different is the tactile sense of striking the drums. The coated heads on the bottom give a stiffer feel to the batter heads at the same tension, which is really interesting. It is a little bit of an articulation boost just to the feel, even though it doesn't really sound that different. Um, almost like they're choked a little bit. They don't sound choked, obviously. They sound basically the same, but the actual hitting of them does feel a little bit different. So that's something to think of. Um, the second thing is, some people like the look of coated bottom heads. That's why there um, are a lot of white, but not coated bottom heads out there in the world in different colors and things like that. So the second thing we can take away is that if you like the look of coated on the bottom, but you need to swap out your batters for a different sort of gig, you don't need to change the resos really, because it's not gonna make that much of a difference, and which was kind of a, a sensible thing actually to me, because the idea of needing to change them both whenever you change them, seems like you know extra money that maybe you don't need to spend or extra time that you don't need to spend. There's a small percentage of people out there who might be miking both sides of the toms, perhaps in a recording situation or for certain kinds of music where you're trying to get the tone from the bottom of the drum, maybe because there's a lot of cymbals in the top mics, things like that. I've seen this in some extreme metal situations and different things like that. There might be a discernible difference in a bottom mic situation, um, but that's just not something that I ever do, so we're kind of leaving it out of this because it's, it's just kind of outside of our realm of things that we would normally do in our lives. Um, but that could be a thing to think about if that's, if that's a, a situation that you find yourself in, for sure. Now, here's a back-to-back -back clear versus coded. So as you can see, they both sound pretty good. They sound like toms. They have nice articulation. The tone is good. It's all there. Um, so ultimately, you can do this if you want. You can not do it if you don't want. It's not a real big difference. It's definitely not the same as changing the batter heads for sure, um, both because toms are generally mic'd from the batter side and you're also striking that one. So there's more interaction between the stick and your body with that head. Um, but in the end, yeah, it's kind of just a, it's almost a cosmetic option, really, um, I would say, or just, as I mentioned earlier, a thing that you don't have to change if you're changing your batter heads out. This is a perfect example of something we talk about a lot here, which is learn through experience rather than through what you've been told, anecdotes, uh, any, anything that is separate from actually getting your hands on the thing and checking it out. In this case, because I had expectations that came out differently than I thought they would, you know? So that, that's, it's a perfect example of that type of situation where you can have an idea in your head and it might turn out the way you think, it might not, but the only way to really know, especially on your drums, in your room, with your sticks and your music and all that stuff, uh, you gotta try things like this out on your own. And it is worth noting that we did do exactly the same tuning on these. So there could be a range where maybe this is different. Like maybe if we were cranking up the resos, the coded would choke out earlier or something like that. It's hard to say, but that's another reason to try this if you're in the mood for tonal experimentation on your kit too, and try some extreme tunings and see if there is a difference uh, within the tuning schemes that you use, you know, because we're all different and we're all trying to get different stuff out of the drums for uh, the exact situations that we're in. All right, thanks again for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe and click the notification button down there so you get notifications of our videos. If you haven't been getting notifications, just bear in mind that they come out every Tuesday at 12 30 p.m. So it's there whether YouTube tells you or not. Thanks to Promark by Diderio, presenting sponsor, for helping us out. And please let us know what you think about this upside down combination that really doesn't sound a whole lot different than the regular combination. Mm -hmm.